good morning class uh, today we will be uh, discussing about dynamic programming which is really important for these interviews because uh, there's hundred percent chance that the interviewer might ask you to basically optimize your solution whichever you gave like brute solution brute force and then more optimization right so uh, like yeah one slight note like before jumping to this like watching this video please go and watch uh, recursion video because that's the base of this right I, uh, I will explain how but uh, just please go and watch the recursion video after that you can maybe come to this right so please make a note of it and uh, <coughs> excuse me yeah so let's just start with dp right so dp uh, you can say that people call this dp as what uh, like dp as enhanced recursion actually right enhanced recursion so like the like to make any problem dynamic uh, use dynamic programming we need to make the solution first recursion right so that's why uh, you need to go and watch the video of recursion fine understood yeah so uh, now as you know like like uh, recursion is a part of dynamic programming only right like what what used to happen in recursion uh, like let's say that we have some uh, we have some function right we have some func and uh, there used to be some recursive calls right like with fun and minus one and basically the input used to go uh, become smaller and smaller and there has there was a recursive tree if you guys remember right so again I'm telling please go and watch recursion video fine so uh, that's a thing like it's the base like this recursion recursion is the base of the DP right we will be writing our solutions first in recursion and then we will you know uh, see how we can transform it to dynamic programming right so uh, one one thing like you should know like how to identify how to identify how to identify uh, questions right how to identify questions of recursion so this uh, this if you have watched the video you know like how we used to judge if the question requires recursion or not like if the question can be solved in recursion or not it's very easy there were two uh, things in uh, which used to be a deciding factor for recursion right so first first would be first uh, first point was like if in question choice is given like if we are if in the question if we are uh, making a choice choice will be there right if question has choice then recursion can be you know basically applied because what happened in this recursive tree there was choice right if you know like the subset problem which we did of choosing like don't you re uh, remember like if there was some subset problem of a b c and we had to basically make the most the all the number of possible subsets right like a b a c b c so we were choosing uh from a b c right like the space and a right so we were choosing and all so their recursion was uh, applied right so choice if the choice will be given then recursion can be applied right and uh if optimal is asked what is optimal uh, easy like max min largest right uh, smallest if that is asked somewhere in the question then most probably you will apply recursion fine that's one point right uh, <clears throat> like if uh, basically you can say that uh, if there's uh, uh, we can say that uh, there are there should be three three steps right there should be three steps to basically uh, in the dynamic programming so let me just also write that right because this is really important like few steps in DP I will say right so first step what will be the first step the first step will be first uh, just hold on first step would be to 
first step would be to write a recursive solution recursive recursive recursion recursive function first basically right which he used to call, be called again and again right so second step would be to memoize it that i will explain right and the third step would be a top down approach basically these are the steps few steps in dp these are the steps in dp uh, we will be seeing how to create recursive recursive function then memoize it basically the, these two steps if you do your dp is applied right your dp is applied and if you also uh, basically if you see a uh, top down approach that is also equal like the efficiency of top down approach and memoize memoization is similar like most of the time it is similar only in one two cases a uh, top down approach is considered more but more or less the time complexity is similar of these right so this is where db happens right also you can say that uh, uh like some steps uh basic steps i will also write just for your recursion first recursion will happen fine recursion will happen then memoization and since uh, like i also need to teach the top down hence i will also tell how to go from memoization to top down approach got it so that's will be our uh approach in today's video right so yeah so these are the steps few steps and recursion plus memoization or top down approach is only the dp got it so that's what the basic uh theory was behind the nine program also a note like how to identify uh how to identify dynamic programming questions right so there was one note that let's say that uh, we have uh, you you can make a note right so please note like in recursion in recursion if to include element in knapsack and this i will basically tell you guys but for now just imagine knapsack as just a data structure right or not right if two recursive calls if two recursive calls are there are uh, there then dp is possible what am i saying by this line a uh, an knapsack i will explain but knapsack just is just a uh, a uh, data structure which i will be i mean it's just a way right i will tell you that but just for now uh, imagine that if DC, dp is possible or not let's say that we had uh, in like when drawing the recursive tree right so there was one function here and then which used to be called as like this and these functions right so if same function like you know like uh, but let's say that this is recursive tree and when the function is called this this used to call this then yes this used to go back here then this used to be called right if you remember and then again this used to get called here now if any some case if this if this is called again here right which is not needed right so if you have like if this function is called again in this branch in this tree then dp is possible right that's the only uh, meaning of this line dp is possible fine so that's the meaning of this line <coughs> yeah so also one thing you should know that in, D in D uh, dp it's actually not that much of complexity like so if you have a parent problem basically there's one parent problem in in dynamic programming what happens is that there's one parent problem right which is basically uh which is basically a variation i mean a, ba a basic problem parent problem will be there and there will be many different types of variations v1 v2 v3 v4 these variations basically 
uh, will be your tough questions which you call right so if you know how to crack the parent problem then it's very easy to solve all these complex problems right so that's the thing so same question but with small so i can also write here that uh, say uh, yeah same question but different same questions with small variations right so if i will teach you how to basically target this parent problem this parent problem right here right and then we can uh, like you can solve any kind of problem right so uh, now coming to knapsack something called as knapsack problem right so uh, knapsack is uh, i will tell you first i will just explain the types of knapsack right so types of knapsack right uh, so they are like if there is a problem based on knapsack which is dp only i will wait let me also write it here like this right so there are basically three types of knapsack like the three types of uh, knapsack you can encounter in kind any kind of question right so first would be uh first would be a fractional first would be a fractional uh fractional knapsack right uh which actually basically this is the greedy method right so i will just write it here this is a greedy method right we will uh, uh see about that also next is the 01 uh knapsack fine knapsack zero one knapsack uh that i also i will tell you right and the third one is the unbounded unbounded knapsack fine so there are these types of knapsacks basically knapsack problems can be solved in these three ways knapsack is basically <coughs> a way of solving the dp i will tell you one example for this if you still didn't understand like let's say uh if like let's say that uh, there's a bag right uh, let me just uh, draw this so let's say that there's one bag right uh, there's one bag of uh, there's one there's one bag of 7 kgs right there's one bag of 7 kgs right i mean which can handle 7 kgs so there's written here w is basically the maximum weight which the bag can handle and there are some items given to you i1 i2 i3 i4 and weights of this items is 1 3 4 5 and these are the value basically the price of these value uh, these items right one like the one item two has a weight of 3 kgs and its cost is 4 i mean as in it uh the value of is is 4 rupees right this has the value of 5 rupees this is is 7 rupees this is the most expensive one but this also weighs the more right most right so uh basically here you you need to uh the question ask you right the question ask you like how many how many uh, items <coughs> you can that can be that can be inserted in bag or put in bag which will give us max profit right so that's the problem basically this is what the problem is so you need to main, you need to maintain a lot of things here like there are a lot of parameters the first gate is given value is given you need to see pick most of the uh high uh, uh profitable items but also keeping in mind that there's a limit to the weight as well right so let's say that you pick the f item 4 right you can pick item 4 which means that 5 rupees profit is there but 7 kg uh, sorry 5 kg weight and 7 rupees so 7 will be profit plus and there's still 2 kg is left right so 2 kg you can enter what i1 i1 you can enter maybe right so i1 will give you uh 1 rupees so 6 kg is 1 rupees right so 7 8 right or there's no other item right or maybe you can enter i1 again right so uh 9 9 will be a profit 
and i1 i4 i1 i1 if i4 i1 i1 are stored 9 will be the profit right so there's one profit now what if you store i3 uh i4 actually yeah i3 let's say you store i3 which is 4 4 profit is 5 right so let's say you store i3 and uh, left 4 2 kgs are left right so you can enter maybe i1 and i1 one plus one five six seven so this gives seven so this this has if you store i2 i i3 i1 i1 you'll get seven profit if you store i4 i1 i1 you'll get nine rupees ka profit so these are the ways now you need to pick up the most like uh most number of items which will give you the maximum profit you don't know if nine is the maximum you need to try all of things right keeping in mind that it should not exceed the seven kg wala thing got it so that's the if these this type of questions now here you are also you know choosing picking and basically what what is happening here this is happening like you have you have one two three four this diagram is also really important for you to understand knapsack you can consider it as a one some data structure right some data structure you have w1 you have w2 you have w3 you have w4 right and all others have some profits p2 p3 p4 right now you are you need to basically you are picking and you know basically this also has some max w you are picking and choosing and putting right all the combinations and just seeing what is the maximum of it so in if this this kind of thing this is called as knapsack problem basically right where you need to put a certain amount of items uh, according to the need right so uh, this like this can be this types of knapsack are of two types basically there are two different approaches here right now we will start with knapsack so one will be the zero one and one will be the fractional right so there are two nights of knapsacks approach which we can basically uh, do right so let's say let's say that uh, in this please like in this question only uh, let's start with uh, fractional right let's start with fractional first so uh, let me just write that statement like if bag is 10 kgs right and 9 kg you have is full right if you have entered some 9 kg right and 1 kg is left so right 1 kg is left then then what you can do like here also uh, here also did you see that i that here uh, i1 basically was uh, like till here 6 kg was done so i or again entered i1 right i1 full item but in fractional instead of adding a full item what you do is that you can split a particular item into two parts as well like let's say that there is a 1 kg left right 1 kg is left but there is a 2 kg item only so if there is a 2 kg item which is of rupees 20 you can split these into two halves basically right uh, this will be split it with 1 kg this will be also 1 kg and the profit will also get divided because the weights have been divided and you can just put this you can just choose this here and put that so this is a type of fractional we can break the items in half and uh, pride, uh, prices right so we can basically here we, we can break the item in half in halves in halves and their weights and profits got it so this is actually a greedy method this is a greedy method fractional method is a kind of a greedy method right uh, the fractional is done now zero one as the name says zero one basically it's it's suggesting that there will be a binary approach as in if you will choose the item or either basically basically either put two kgs after removing after removing some item after removing one kg or don't put or don't put at all 
basically what this is saying is that what this is saying is that if there's one if the bag weight is 10 kg right 10 kg and 9 kg is full so there are two ways you can do either you can remove 2 kg and make it as 8 kgs right 8 kg you can make it and then put the 2 kg item right or 8 kg you have done right or it or like either the second choice is not the fractional method as like you will still you can just make it keep it as 9 kg only don't pick don't choose only 9 kg only so that's the point of 0 1 basically you can also write it here like 0 1 either to pick or I mean uh, here it will be not pick and here it will be pick Got it. So not pick or pick. That's the meaning of zero one knapsack, right? So uh, another type of knapsack is also there, unbounded, unbounded uh, knapsack, right? Unbounded knapsack. What this says? What this says? Let's see. Uh, this basically says that uh, let's say we have one item right and we have one bag we have one bag we have one item we have one items instance right we can create one items instance which has no limit basically this instance has no limit has no limit to put this item in bag this has no I, uh, limit in putting bag basically this is what I did actually here as well right uh, like here I performed the unbounded one right like even if the item was there only one item was there I even I again inserted I one right you can see so I can do this for infinite number of times right that's what unbounded means Got it. Uh, so wait. Let me also write it. We have to create items instance here. What? That's one uh, point here. Uh, so in summary, in summary, we can say that uh, we can. I can just draw this for you, right? So knapsack. Knapsack can be of basically. Uh, Uh, three three types right so I can say one two three got it uh, we also do this here so one would be of fractional one would be uh, what zero one and what last would be unbounded and you can also say that fractional here you can add 0 0.5 items basically right and here there's no there's either 0 choosing and 1 unbounded there's infinite infinite items can be put here you can just say that uh, either either choose or not choose basically kinda like uh, kinda like recursion basically yeah so this is the summary knapsack summary right so uh, we will be studying with we will going with zero one uh, knapsack right now right so let's see what we have here so we have uh, we will be dealing with this problem only here right uh, where was it this this problem only so uh, let's say that uh, how to identify right so how to identify I will again right identify if knapsack can be applied so there are two ways right one will be if the choices if you can see the choices are happening or if optimal solution is asked right so these are the two ways where you can basically identify if choice if knapsack can be applied or not right and there is also uh, one thing that DP 
basically the whole DP thing revolves around these things. Recursion, basically this is what DP is. Re recursion plus storage optimization. Optimization. This is what whole uh, about. This is what uh, is about the dynamic programming. Like if in question you have applied the recursion, right, and uh, DP is there, right. So this is what recursion plus storage known as dynamic programming. Got it. So this is the point. Uh, this is what dynamic programming is. So let's say that we have one question. Now let's discuss like. Uh, what is exactly how we can approach these types of things right uh, yeah so so this is what uh, the whole uh, what we'll be discussing right now so I input it's given these three things and uh, maximum profit will be the output so TP would be the recursion of this plus the storage optimization which will do or memoization right so Choices like choices to make if we put like if we put I1 first, I1 or I2, etc. 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 Right. So we can make a choice diagram. There's something called as a choice diagram. Right. Uh, let me also do that. So we can make a choice diagram basically to decide which item to choose, which item to not choose. Right, so there's one concept of choice diagram here, right? Uh, yeah, so let's say that let's say that we have one item one, we have item, we have item one, we chose item one first, right? And this will have its own weight, this will have its own weight as well of uh, W one, right? Yeah, W one weight will be there. W1 weight will be there uh, and so we need to decide we need to check two things here uh, basically wait we need to discuss we need to ch uh, check two things right if if and if W1 basically W1 is can be smaller than W W was again W W here the total W was the maximum weight W E I G H T we, maximum weight back can handle right so that was the W can handle right W is the maximum weight that the back can handle so we have w, let's say that we pick W1 weight item 1 which has W1 weight so W1 can be so W1 can be smaller or equal to W yeah that's a one possibility or or another choice another thing can be w1 is greater than w right so now just apply your brain only like if the item if there's one item let's say that if there's one bag right there's one bag whose maximum capacity is w and we have an item w1 whose weight is more than w right whose weight is more than w can this get inside this bag no right that can't happen so we can say that if this this case is there if this case is there then there's no point like there's no you can just you just need to return right so this will the uh, result of this would be no not to to not put this item at all right to not put this item at all right because it's heavier than the weight of the bag maximum capacity uh, right but in this case in this case let's see let's see there are two more possibilities either now as again our choice was to either i pick i1 right or pick i2 right or pick other items right so i either we can pick this or we can also not pick this we can choose some other items so this is what a choice diagram is basically right this is how choice diagram is proceeds basically right uh, so yeah this is the whole point now i will uh, teach I will just uh, know you uh, teach you about the solution pattern which we will follow here right so this is what the solution pattern would be would look like let me go back yeah 
So this is what solution pattern would look like, right? Uh, so let's say we have we have these values, right? We have int weight array, we have int value array, w and n, right? N is the number of items, right? So we can we need to have two things. We need to have uh, basically we need to have base condition. We need to define one base condition and we need to make the write the code for the choice diagram. These two things and done. Your DP is done basically. This is what this is how easy it is. There's no this is what you need to first figure out the base condition and then the choice diagram, right? So, uh, one trick of base condition, which basically many people don't follow, right? So, ba base condition, you can just write this. So, base condition is like think of the smallest valid input, right? So, this is what you need to if like you need to decide the base condition right so this is really important is really important right please note this right note this like uh, if you need to follow if you need to decide if base condition you need to think of the smallest valid input here right how we can think that let's see let's see let's say that uh, now here let's say that we have uh, what we have we have two we uh, in this case we have weight array right we have weight array and we have value value array right there's one weight array and there's one value array right we have this we have this also right uh, now n uh, and w is also let's say we have the max cage 10 kg is the max right so either we can this these are the n items right weight and value can are the same because n items are we are considering so either n can we can make n zero which will be valid right like if there's no item right that can also happen or we can either make the maximum weight as zero as well that can also happen zero is valid basically so these are valid it's valid this is also valid valid these two are valid so if now now you tell me like if the items are zero and the weight maximum weight that buyer can handle is zero right so what will be what will be the maximum profit zero only right because there's nothing to basically put in the bag and there's no bag right so there's nothing uh right and this hence like hence this is valid so hence this will be the base condition so we can just write quickly the base condition here basically if if n is equal to equal to 0 or w max w is equal to equal to 0 what do you do you just return return 0 basically right because there's nothing so this will be your base condition this will be your base condition base condition this will be your base condition fine so that's the whole point. Uh, now we will see about uh, choice diagram. How to make the choice diagram. Right? And this base condition you will learn as you, you know, uh, move ahead. Right. So don't worry if you still didn't get it. Uh, so base diagram. So sorry, choice diagram. Choice diagram. Now let's see what is this choice diagram. How we can make this choice diagram. Right. Uh, so also one note before going that you can just write like in recursion always call next further call basically call with smaller input smaller input right as as I mean you you still know that but still there's just one point I wanted to men mention like if there's one recursive call the next call should be the smaller input like just next smaller one just keep this in mind uh, right so this is just a note for you guys got it uh yeah so here uh yeah so here let's say that we have so we have weight array and value array right and this has uh so this has basically uh, this some array, right? This some array. This also the same number of array, n, 
n size array so what we are doing here is that we are removing from the last basically we need to remove this last thing as like n n minus 1 we need to go so we will remove from n minus 1 and then consider this these these arrays right so you can you can basically just uh, draw this again i will draw that uh, choice diagram right so there's one item one right there's one item one of w1 of w1 uh, there can be two there are two choices here right so w1 can be smaller than uh, w the max output or it can be uh, greater so if it is greater there's no point of adding right but if this is smaller you can either add it or not add it you have the choice here right so what you can do here basically you can proceed a code you can write a code right here let me show you how right so basically what you can do is that you can return you can return uh, like okay let me also write the condition if weight of n minus 1 is smaller or equal to w right uh, what is wt n minus 1 because we because here we picked one item right this is the next call hence w n minus 1 right so here uh, the point is like you can either return maximum of two things first value of n minus 1 value of n minus 1 because you basically subtracted right plus knapsack now here you can call the knapsack problem uh, this is a uh, let's say that this is one function this one knapsack function only right knapsack function only so this we write writing solution for this only so we can call knapsack again we can say that weight value this had value this had now if you pick if you pick one item from the bag right if you have picked one item if you have crossed if you're at at this level if you're at this level right so maximum capacity here would be w the bag but if you have picked one item w1 if you have taken if uh, if you have put one item from uh, weight array if you choose this array then what will be the weight of this it will be w the maximum weight minus w1 which you have picked right this will be what left for you in the weight right so hence we like if the second call in the second call we will be writing w t minus w1 which we picked right from the array uh sorry sorry like w here in this way we'll be writing w t plus also this will be n minus 1 because we have picked one item right and n minus 1 also because the value is less right so we'll be choosing this either this or we are not choosing it right so we can just write knapsack but we can go with w t right value and we have not chosen anything so w and n minus 1 n minus 1 again why because uh, we are choosing we are basically we have not picked it hence we have not detected it from the weight but we are not choosing it right hence w n minus 1 so i can say this is what the choice diagram code will look like and that's all recursion for you right uh, wait so here basically knapsack here there will be one base con there will be one uh, code for base condition base condition base condition would be what which we discussed if n is equal to 0 or w is equal to 0 w equal to 0 you you return zero right that's this will be its condition and this will be of choice diagram which you know right which you now know like how this will be of choice diagram and this if you see this this part here this part here like the choosing or not choosing this is what this part is like uh, if you are choosing this will be the code the maximum of this will be the code and if you're not choosing this will be the code and we are, we have to take the max of it because we need to maximize we need to get the optimal 
we need to get the optimal solution right so we need to pick the maximum profit these two can get so if we need to choose which will create more profit either if we choose w1 or not hence we are using max and this is what the whole pattern is so knapsack problems will follow a very similar pattern like this right and this is how we will basically uh, uh, break our problems right so we can i can also say that recursion now we have done the recursion now we need to go to memoization so this is what like till now we have just read about recursion only this is a one kind of choice diagram and all this is a recursion only right now for dp to happen dp has still not uh, been added here for dp to happen here we need to make we need to memoize it right the memoization so and also only two lines will be required for this only two lines two or three lines max right so uh, what we can do here like for memoization i will just write steps so you can make one make one dp matrix of n cross m uh, identify number of inputs there are some steps which you need to follow i'm just writing that fine for your note preference so make one this identify number of inputs right and recursive functions right this all what you need to do these two steps you need to do and how first first let's start with uh, okay what we had here knapsack knapsack we had weight array we had uh, value array right we had w and we had n fine this is what we had right uh, now now you know that uh, this w this w uh was reducing like weight w uh not w basically uh what we were doing here was we were w as recursive calls were happening we we're making it w and w t and minus 1 right because right you you got the sense right the total weight will be the we will subtract that as we are choosing right like here we were choosing from the last hence w t min n minus 1 and also we were dec decreasing this to n minus 1 because we are discarding one item from the uh, array right so these two are the changes so identify the changes so these are the changes here right hence we will deal with W and N only. The matrix will be made of N and M only. So this, for this, for making what kind of matrix, we need to determine what changes are being done, right? So to make, to make the matrix, we need to see, we need to see what changes are being done in each recursive calls. right so this is what this is why we were discussing that fine now coming to dp array so we can make one dp dp array n plus 1 and w plus 1 now why i have done n plus 1 w plus 1 uh, because uh, you need to basically the consideration array it can go till n but just for safety purpose i am defining more like see this dp array will cons will consist of all the possible choices which we have but just to be on safer side and n and w are the maximum of uh, the inputs right but just to be on safer side we are taking n plus 1 or either you can add the these values can be your n plus 1 w plus 1 the changes or you can also add here the constraints given like in the question constraints are also mentioned constraints can be here so constraints you can also basically write Uh, like in lead code question if you go uh, below in the last it's written right constraints right so you can add that as well right so uh, let's say that we made one we made one matrix right and uh, let me quickly draw one matrix just one rough matrix let's say we have this matrix and uh, right this will be of n plus 1 this will be of w plus 1 and we first we need to 
fill all the cells with minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Right. This is just for uh, like what is memorization? It just tells you that if that solution has been solved. If that part of recursive call has been done, don't do that again, right? So these minus one suggests that it's just empty. This solution has not been done. This part of problem is not been done, right? So uh, what we need, what we can do is that we can basically now convert this DP. We can basically make this as a mem set. Basically to fill these, we can use mem set of CPP, right? Uh, of Java, you can also do it at uh, in some way, uh, in DP you can do like this size of uh, DP basically, right? Mem set. If you write this code, it will just fill all the uh, all the cells of all the values as of the DP matrix as minus one, minus one, minus one, right? Oh, sorry, this will be minus one here, not one, right? So mem set using mem set, you can basically call this right. Uh, so for this question, I can also proceed with like this, right? Int uh, dp of 102. Let's say that, let's say that uh, constraints, we are given some constraints of, uh, so let's say that we are given one constraint. Uh, what happened here? Yeah. Yeah, so we are given constraints basically as constraints are given as uh, n is smaller or equal to 100 and uh, uh, w is also equal to 100 let's say this is the constraint given in the question so what we can do here is that we can create a dp array dp matrix of this and this right this let's say this is 1000 right uh, yeah so we can create a DPR of this, like just to be on safer side, 102. And we can create a mem set. We can basically now insert minus one in all this uh, matrix created for size of DP. Yeah. Now we can write that int knapsack, uh, int knapsack function. Now here will be the base condition, which we discussed, right? which I guess you can write now base condition and now now uh, if these two lines only we will be adding in the memoization to memoize it basically uh, okay let me just uh, copy paste this question so that you know where we are changing it right that's also important wait And this will be here. Yes. Now it's fine. So let's say that this is the problem now. So knapsack, we defined this in globally DP array uh, size. We have defined this and we are given this. This was the earlier recursive question, right? So now base condition after writing base condition, you need to add one line. Right, which will check if that if that recursive call has been done or not earlier. So if dp, basically it will just fill it. If dp of n and w, right, is not equal to minus one. Yeah, is not equal to minus one. Then what you need to do? You need to just uh, basically return dp of n w. Right, and also here also you need to basically when you're returning you need to make it as n w. Right, so these two lines like this, uh, this change, wait. So this change and adding of this line and creating this. I mean, yeah. So only these two lines you need to basically change here to make it at memoization right so uh, uh, what did I do here like DP of n I have created one DP right and I have just filled like 
here I have just filled it with minus one, minus one, minus one. So let's say that the base condition is not being followed and the uh, like we are here, right? Like then if this is the solution, if there's one call happening and this solution has been solved, right? So this will, let's say that this solution was part of this cell. So this will get, you know, basically uh, not minus one, this will get to one, right? If it has been solved. So here now, let's say that if we need to solve another part of question, so or maybe uh, after some calls, this like in recursive calls, like if the recursive call is happening, if it has happened here, right? So it will make it minus one to one, right? And if in another branch, if that calls again encounters, it will check if the DPRA has it. If the DPRA has solved it, it basically DPRA is keeping the track if that particular recursive call has been done or not. If it has been done, then don't do it. Like, just return this. So this will just memoize the solution basically. This is what the whole point of memoization is. Right, so this is what DPRA is, I mean, sorry, deep, uh, dynamic programming is basically. Right, uh, so we have, in summary, we have done recursive call recursive call we have also memoize it we have also done memoization of it and then now we have we need to see how to write down top down approach of the solution right so till now we have done these well these things right we have done recursive calls now we need to check top down approach which we'll be doing next right so now top down approach coming to top down approach yeah top down approach uh as i told you these are the steps right um yeah so you can also say that uh, recursion basically we can recursion is basically base condition right which has some RC recursive calls right uh, recursion is done by basically making these this thing uh, base condition and it has recursive calls now how did we memoize it which is actually a DP dynamic programming is this only we did RC plus we had that we had that uh, matrix basically that uh, memoized uh, matrix right so I can say that this was the combination of memoization right uh, where we were just putting minus one minus one minus one and if this has been done this was getting converted right this was the summary this is what is now uh, the basically the drawback of this uh, this approach memoization is that like uh, it's like it's better like uh, I mean here you can see that recursive call is happening again and again in memoization RC will happen again and again so it's always it's always better to uh, to like lower the recursive calls recursive calls right because uh, if there are a lot of recursive calls like see like when we are doing one recursive call Right, when we are doing recursive call, it is getting full in a stack, right, RC1, then there's one RC2, recursive calls are getting full, like, uh, as we are doing recursive calls. So, like, this problem doesn't occur much, but if the recursive calls are a lot in memoization, we are again, like, you can see, recursive calls are happening again and again, even here also, we are calling knapsack here, here, right, so, this recursive calls are happening again and again, which, maybe which kind of leads to basically this leads to stack overflow error this is what leads to stack overflow error if it is getting uh, full right so it's always better if you know we get to better approach right and with top down with top down approach we will not use we won't use RC at all. So basically, basically, like if 
I go here. Right. So with dyn with top down approach, we will be uh, removing the recursive call. We will just use this matrix of top down. Right. So with top down approach, this will be the case. Got it. So this is what top down approach importance you know now. Right. <coughs> so basically, we need to convert the uh, wait. We need to convert the recursive call, recursive code. We need to convert the recursive, uh, recursive code, recurs recursion code to uh, top down, right? Top down. We need to convert this recursive code code to top down approach, right? Uh, let me use my sliders. It'll be better, right? So recursive to top down approach. Uh, now there are few steps, right? So first step would be to basically make making table, making table of uh, changing variable. Uh, that's what we did earlier also, right? So making table of changing variable, but with extra units, as I told you that as well with extra extra units with extra units right so there will be few steps which we will be following so step so step one would be initialize initialization right we will be initializing the these uh, uh, matrix and the next would be basically this thing next step would be to basically make this recursion to iterative method we'll make this to iterative method right so this is the one of the important things you need to know right how to make this see uh, so we will be seeing this uh, now let me also say that we have this uh, these items right uh, now like this was the question if you remember right and the W was also uh, W here the maximum weight which it can handle oh, wait it again got disappeared sorry about this sorry yeah so the maximum weight it can basically handle was what the blue maximum weight was seven right seven yeah so uh yeah n and n here let me also write it n here is four right so hence we will be basically we can we can make a dp array right we can make a dp array of uh, n plus one and w plus one Right, W plus one and plus one that was our uh, required thing, which means that we need to make an array of DP of n plus one, which means five, and DP of sorry, uh, seven plus one, which is eight. Right, so this is why I have created this PP matrix. Uh, right, all yeah, so let me also mark that. Uh, what exactly here is zero. Three, yeah so uh, for basically you can now let me just tell you one thing that zero you need uh, zero there's no value of zero right the array starts from here basically which means that this which means that let me also draw that this 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 and this this means one three four Five. This for just for your understanding. So int weight. This will be the weight array and value. Value will be corresponding to this, right? So one, four, five. So I have just written this, these things. One, three, four, five, one, four, seven. Here, zero. We are just writing for extra unit. I will tell you why, right? Uh, so you can also say that this, this will be a W, which will be considered as J. 
and this will be the weight array i right weight array so first uh, we will be like we are fill, uh, filling maximum profit in each grid basically right so for just for initialization we will be putting 0 0 0 here right 0 0 0 0 uh, 0 0 0 0 we won't be you know we we will initialize it like this we are filling you need to know like in this dpra what we are doing we are filling max profit in each in each grid in each cell right and this these are will be zero because if the if any of these value are zero there's no point of profit right so zero 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 fine uh yeah so we are filling all these things now let's say that we target uh, we target what two three we target this this array oh, sorry this cell what this means what exactly this means this means this means that we have weight array as we have weight array as one three right and we have some value array as uh, one four yeah we have these values we have these values and uh, so basically what's happening here is that if we are considering this you can say that you can see that only these two only these two uh, one three one four only these two values are here right let me also show you in dotted way only these two values are being considered here right because we are till here only we are considering so only these two values are there and this will be a weight array which will be three so maximum will be three three right so this is one kind of a sub problem you can say that this is a sub problem <clears throat> this is a sub problem this is a sub problem right like if we have this weight array values this and maximum capacity you can put here is three right so this is one sub problem now also let's take one more thing one more uh, cell actually so let's say uh, three six let's say this what will this mean what will this mean let's see let's write that fully right this will mean wt is basically one three four right you can also visualize now and uh, weight value this will be one four five right makes sense right and the w would be six maximum weight would be six here so you can say that this is also one kind of sub problem here right this is also one kind of sub problem so these are the sub problems basically sub problems these two are the sub problems if I mean like in this DP array there are a lot of sub problems here right so where will be our final solution would be our final solution would be at the end right when W is basically uh, I mean the last the which will consider all this right which will take all this account and all these values where W will be the seven so our final just just for your note like we will discuss how we will target this this final answer will be given here only right the our final answer would be given here only got it so because it's at the end and seven four this will consider of whole array so this will be our final answer right now uh, we need to make sure about the base condition here but this would be this would be our initialization only initialization was what filling these rows as zeros right so basically in top down approach so recursive 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 functions recursive functions base condition 
changes to initialization in top down approach just for your note please please understand this as well take a note of this so base condition would change like this got it so this is what one may think to note now we need to fill all these matrices as zero right that was the only purpose right like uh, let's say we have this matrix and uh, we need to first fill let's say the we have this matrix we need to fill all these with zeros because we are considering one array right so this this zero how we'll write that very easy very easy we can write if n is equal to zero same actually if n is equal to zero or w is equal to zero you know just uh, return zero right that will be our main base condition one note right now uh, i will tell you uh, code now let's get to the code and like i will let's compare what we have read uh, read earlier right so that you know that there's not nothing much changes here like if you know memorization uh, top down is not much of any different right so let's say that we have base condition here so base condition and we have iterative iterative approach which we will be doing right so uh yeah so let's do this and uh, so uh for for uh, n is equal to 0 and w is equal to 0 return zero. that was our uh, base condition in our uh, memorization right here what will how things will change basically we can write for int i is equal to 0 now here in this matrix basically what we are doing here is that uh, we have i and j we are making array the weight array as i keeping the track of i and for w we are making it as a j right so hence i'm writing this for i is equal to 0 i is less than n plus 1 because it's still that right and i plus plus and we have one more actually uh, int j is equal to 0 j is less than w plus 1 so in this if you iterate through this whole uh, basically if you iterate through this whole uh, matrix array you can if i you can check for if i is equal to uh, 0 or if j is equal to 0 right tp of i uh, j would be equal to 0 uh, basically we are just filling our initialization base condition so base condition in our recursive call was this and here iterative way this will be basically this this thing what we are doing we are performing this only like filling all the zeros right makes sense it's self-explanatory right uh, now uh, we are clear with the initialization part right now coming to the main code uh, here also I will be comparing so that you know again you know uh, like that the things are not much of different right so now the code now the main code we will be doing so first recursion and then we will compare with the top down I'm just writing this here for like because this is your first time right uh, otherwise you just you can directly jump to top down right but again before jumping top down you need to be clear with the recursive part as well please make sure that fine uh, because it's easier you know and it's a better way fine so let's see now let's say we have if like in recursion what we were doing if weight of n minus 1 is smaller than the or equal smaller or equal to total weight yeah that's what we were doing right return 
we need we were returning two things maximum of uh, val n minus one right plus knapsack of uh, weight val and since we were taking one value out right we were taking one value out let me write it here like this we were taking one value out right so that will cause the uh, decrease in the weight n minus 1 right and n minus 1 yeah yeah that's right comparing with comma knapsack of wt val where we don't pick basically right so w n so this was our uh, we will we have to basically uh, find the maximum of these right in our recursive solution let me yeah so this was our recursive solution right uh, and here also we were basically what we were doing here is that let's say that this is one n size of array we were taking out one array this became n minus one we were taking out this part la the end part right hence there was wt n minus one this was which was left you know the logic right of this so yeah now here in top-down approach we will do something different slight difference let's say again here also we will go if the weight array is smaller or equal to w that's the uh, uh, that's the obvious right now if dp of n w we will be defining dp of n w just right here maximum of again now here there's no there's no value of n minus uh, one right i mean there's one thing but uh, yeah we will start with value of n minus one fine and then we will write dp of w minus w t n minus one right yeah and n minus one right is that right yeah which we will be comparing with dp of n minus one and w we need to find the maximum of these values else else what you do dp of n w you basically decrease it to continue with this n w this is capital w actually yeah so this is what uh, so this is what uh, our top down approach will look like right so basically what we are here doing is that we are finding we are finding the maximum of so let's say that we have this matrix right so let's say these this one problem has been solved this one problem has been solved so we are taking the maximum of it as the answer right because that's the word and that's what our intention is to maximize the profit right so this is why we will do we will be doing like this only got it so dp uh, wait, I have this will be here like this. Yeah, so this is what the thing is, right? Either we are decreasing one weight here or we are decreasing one weight there, right? So this is what either we are choosing that or not choosing. Hence, this is the same logic here only, right? So this is what the slight change would be in the top down approach. Right, so our whole point of doing this is basically, uh, let me, so whole point of doing this is that, let's say we have, again, let me just write that, uh, like, uh, when we were doing this, if wt n minus 1 and w, which, uh, n minus 1 is equal to w right then this you need to perform this code right 
where dp will be in w which will be a maximum of two things value of n minus 1 right plus dp of n minus 1 w minus wt of n minus 1 because we are you know picking either picking or not picking right yeah uh, or max or just don't pick it n minus 1 keep do keep going ahead but don't pick it that's what the meaning is right it's very easy so this is what the meaning is else else what you do you just go ahead you just go ahead with the uh, dp of yeah so this is what the logic is and here you can see that uh, they are if they are uh, basically we are either choosing picking or not picking here in this in this scenario what we are hap what we are, is happening is that we have some items here and the, we are picking a last we are either choosing this or not choosing this and then considering this whole in the next problem right this is what uh, the thing is now let's just complete the final code for this like just using also one thing to note that here basically you need to know you need to make a note of this as well that we have one matrix here right we have one matrix here and uh, which has w as i and which has this as w of j right so this will be covered this will be covered with some value, zeros right so basically we are making nw as i comma j we need to change this as well so please make a note of that which we will be doing in our final code which is right here uh, let me write that final code right so for int i let me quickly write that if for int i is equal to 0 right i is equal to n plus 1 i plus plus yeah and for int j is equal to 0 j is less than w plus 1 j plus plus yeah uh, so if weight of i minus 1 I'm changing it to n to uh, n to i right so just write just changing that uh, so dp of i j right which will be the maximum of what value of value of uh, i my n minus 1 th right so i minus 1 we will change that plus dp of uh, i minus 1 and j minus wt of i minus 1 right you can just compare that to here i'm just changing it right n w to ij you need to keep that in mind that's all nothing different is happening here else dp i minus 1 j else return what return this dp of i minus 1 j got it so this is what our choice diagram here would be and uh, yeah so this is what we did now right now uh, so yeah so this was the final code basically nothing much more to that if you need to sum up this whole thing basically which what we did is that we first need to uh, make the dp array with the constraints right we need we saw how these are the sub problems base condition in top down approach will be converted to initialization so we need to initialize it first right so before this we need to initialize this also like this was the only logical code uh, it's not the final code but it's the, just the logical code for that for the solving part before this you need to fill using the mems uh, using this iterative method right this one and then you can just perform this top down approach right so this is what the sum up is right we need to get the maximum and then we will mostly get our uh, problem right so yeah
so yeah that's all that's it for now we have discussed today dynamic programming uh, i would like you to do some questions which will be given in a telegram channel so yeah so and also if you are not subscribed to this channel please subscribe uh, there will be another video of questions only uh, in here in this video i have just explained the concept right so you can also go ahead with the questions as well it's not much of the thing but still if you need any help please let me know so yeah ending this class uh, i will see you in next thank you